السلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين مولانا وسيدنا أبي القاسم محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعلى آله الطاهرين لا سيدنا بقية الله في الأرض أرواحنا له الفداء Respected elders, brothers, sisters, salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to our second session of these four sessions looking at the Ziyarat Ali Yaseen we are joined by our esteemed uh, and respected guest and scholar, uh, Hajara Sheikh Shumali. Um, and we are going to uh, go into this ziyarat in a bit more depth this week. Our uh, stream is open for uh, live questions, comments, and reactions, etc. Please do interact. This is one of the things that we want to achieve uh, with these programs. And uh, before we go into any further details regarding the ziyarat, Hajara, last week we touched upon something which we just very briefly discussed. Uh, if you allow me, I want to um, ask you about it a bit more. This is regarding the unity. Yes. Where you said that, you know, it's very rare today to find a community which is totally united, like Shias from different backgrounds coming together and collaborating. Uh, what do you mean by that? What, what does such a unity mean and what does it look like? Could you shed some more light on this? Yes. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad Wa alihi al-Tayyibin al-Tahirin First I would like also to congratulate you and all our dear viewers for great occasions we have had in the month of Sha'ban in the last few days the birth of Imam Hussein alayhi salam the birth of Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas alayhi salam, the birth of Zainul Abidin, Imam Sajjad alayhi salam, alayhi salam. And also today is Nowruz, so uh, the year 400 according to solar Hajri calendar started. And inshallah this year we will have two middle of Sha'ban in the same year. So we will have it inshallah in next week and also inshallah towards end of the year. So we hope that inshallah our year will be filled with the fragrance of Imam Mahdi Ajalallah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif and all our dear viewers inshallah would be able to benefit from a spiritual atmosphere of month of Sha'ban and then month of Ramadan inshallah. Regarding your question this question is in my view one of the most important and most urgent questions and unless we address this question and try to come up with proper practical measures to answer this issue, we would not be able to uh, welcome Imam Mahdi Ajalallah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif among ourselves. If I want to explain this, I need to refer to a very important notion. And that is the notion of social velaya or collective velaya. There is a story here, I don't have time now to go to the whole story, but anyway, after some reflections and some uh, thoughts, some years ago, actually, when I was giving a talk to the Muballaqin of East Africa in Tanzania, for the first time, I presented this idea. And then after that, I shared it with many people, with scholars, ulama, and everyone who heard this, they said, it is correct. Many times people said, it's very correct, very straightforward, but why we didn't think it that way? So, the idea is this that unfortunately some Muslims have not 
understood adequately Velaya, which in our understanding is the soul of Islam. Sometimes uh, I say it in this way and you know people first maybe they be shocked you know I say Velaya is not part of Islam. Some people may be shocked, you know, why it's not part of Islam. Shia say Velaya. So I say Velaya is not part of Islam. It's the soul of Islam. It's the life of Islam. Because if it was part of Islam, anyone who denies it, it's not a Muslim. But if someone doesn't know Velaya, doesn't believe in Velaya, it still can be a Muslim. So it's not a part like Salat or like, you know, Zakat or Hajj, Tawheed. But the relation between Velaya and Islam is of another level. Therefore, Imam said, "Wama nudiya b'shayin kama nudiya bil velaya." So, velaya is not something next to other parts of Islam. It's another level. It's like imagine there is a person who has complete body, everything is okay, but has no life, or has no direction. Therefore, Sunni Shia have said, Man mata wa lam ya'rif imam al-zamanih, mata mita tal jahili. Although maybe he has all the parts of Islam, but without knowing imam of your time, then you are like someone in the time of jahili. Of course, some people might be excused. We have many good non-Shia Muslims. I am sure many of them, they have greater love for Islam and to and for the Prophet than me. I talk about myself. I am proud of my Sunni, many of my Sunni brothers and sisters, mashallah. So we are not talking about people because people may have different you know, reasons and excuses, etc. But we are talking about the concepts in general. So, Velaya is the soul, is the life of Islam, is the direction. Alhamdulillah, we understood this. But we missed something <laughs> and that is what is the core of Velaya. Most of the Shia have missed this. The core of Velaya is that we should be developing the ties of Velaya among ourselves and with Imam and the Prophet and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Velaya is not just me connecting to Imam oh, and then Prophet and then Allah, just a line, a vertical line. You are part of my Velaya. The way I connect to you and relate to you and behave towards you, the way I have concern for you is part of my Velaya. In some Hadith, you know, we have about the rights of Mu'mineen. Then Imam says, if you do this, فَقَدْ وَصَلَتْ وَلَايَتُكَ بِوَلَايَتِهِ أو وَصَلْتَ وَلَايَتَكَ بِوَلَايَتِهِ Our wilaya is connected with each other if we fulfill the rights of each other. So, the soul of wilaya is loving each other for the sake of God. And now I mention few points very quickly, some references to reflect. But if you are more interested, and of course you have to be, I have to be honest, you have to be really interested in this because it's a very important topic, you know. At least listen to these things and if you think different way at the end, okay. But there is no way that someone can ignore these things. So there are lectures on social velaya we have, there are uh, papers. Please familiarize yourself with this concept. So I give you a few examples. Buraid al-Ajli said to Imam Bagr alayhi salam, Oh Imam, you have lots of Shia in Kufa. Imam Bagir, as you know, is not very far from Karbala. He himself was present in Karbala. So we are in that, maybe the same generation of people who witnessed Karbala. So 
He says, you have lots of Shia and Kufa, why you don't uprise against Bani Umayyah? Imam Baqir alayhi salam, of course, has all different kinds of knowledge. And certainly, he knows what the people of Kufa did when they invited his grandfather, Abu Abdullah alayhi salam. So, even if he didn't have al Mulghayb, this was not something hidden. He knows what they have done when they, thousands of signatures, you know, were sent to Imam Hussein alayhi salam from Kufa. So he wants to test them. What do you expect to be the test? How many s signatures? It's not one. How much money? How much weapons? I don't know, weaponaries. Uh, are they organized? Uh, have they, or, uh, for example, formed an army, etc.? No, this is not the question. Do they hold majalis for Abu Abdullah, for example, and, you know, Kirai and Yeah, these are important, but this is not the test. Imam says, أَيَّضَعُ أَحَدُكُمْ يَدَهُ فِي كِيسَ أَخِيهِ فَيَأْخُذُ حَاجَتَهِ Are you Shia in Kufa so close to each other that if one of you has a need and can put his hand in the pocket of his brother and take what he needs? Suppose he has to take his son to doctor, his daughter to doctor. To the brother is not there, but he doesn't have money. The coat of his brother is hanging here. Are you feeling so close to each other that without any worries, you would be 100% sure that your brother is pleased that you take money from his coat? He said, no. Then Imam said, فَهُمْ بِدِّمَاءِهِمْ أَبْخَلْ Then with respect to their, their blood, they would be even more miserly. So, the question is, not that how many are there, how much majalis and etc. occasions are celebrated, commemorated, etc. Even the question is not, not that do they give money for Imam? Do they spend money on, for example, uh, uh, majalis, etc. These are very important. Even the question is not that do they give their homes or not. This is very important, but none of this is enough. The question is how much they established brotherhood, wilaya among themselves. We have in the hadith that when Imam Mahdi Ajalallah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif comes, Ja'atil Muzamala. Muzamala comes. Muzamala in Arabic today, you know, we have Zamil. Zamil means Kalik. Mm. Muzamala initially is when two persons are sitting on back of camel and traveling together. Yeah, so sometimes they put something, you know, like we say in Farsi, Kajawa. What, what is called in English, you know, a special cabin. They put on the camel. Right. Two, two people can yeah. sit. They are called Zamil. <laughs> Muzamala. So, Hadith says, when Imam Mahdi comes, Ja'at al-Muzamala. Narrator asks, what does it mean in this context? Imam says, it means that if they have need, they can put their hand in the pocket of their brothers and take. There is no worry, no hesitation. Now, my question is, if Imam Baqir alayhi salam for Doing something locally in Kufa with Bani Umayyah has such an expectation from his Shia. Do you think Imam Mahdi Ajalallah Ta'ala Farajah Sharif for something universal would expect less? Knowing that he is the last chance, if God forbid Imam Baqir fails, there is Imam Sadiq, there is Imam Ka. This is the last chance and this is universal. 
So he is not going to take any risk. He's not going to be pleased with less than what you know Imam Bagr wanted. Sheikh, what if someone says to you, this is very simple, I mean, this is something very simple. Is it so simple that we just have love towards one another and this is the unity which our beloved Imam is expecting? Is it so simple? Is it so simple? In a sense, it's simple, but unfortunately, so much away from the way we have lived and we have, you know, developed our relations. And so not difficult to understand but unfortunately this is not easy to achieve because if you achieve this it means that you are already a sincere pure believer hope dunya has not affected you mm. bias is not there in you if i can just move you along a little bit Sheikh, there's a question just now that has come relating to this what is the main obstacles to this if it's so simple we know about it we've heard about it then why are we not doing it yeah uh, if you allow me i mention at least two more evidence and then inshallah we go because i want this to at least set it so the first step is at least every shia must know that we are missing something very important. Our velaya is not yet mature. Our velaya is incomplete yet. Imam Amirul Mu'mineen alayhi salam in a hadith that describes the companions of Imam Mahdi Ajalallah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif mentions very important qualities. One is about the way they do about that in the night. The way they are active during the day. About their determination to the extent that um, Amir al muminin says, لَوْ هَمُّوا بِإِزَالَةِ الْجِبَالِ الرَّوَاسِي لَأَزَالُوهَا if the companions of Imam Mahdi decide to move mountain, they will do it. If they know that they must do this, they will do it. And you know, I have said in some lectures, you know, in Hose Akhlaq series, that it seems that future of humanity is more a matter of willpower. Whoever has a stronger willpower would win future. Because money, weapons, equipment, I don't know, technology, all these things more or less become available for everyone. And at least some people would have access to it. So different, you know, isms and different ideologies and different groups would have more or less enough money, technology, you know, even communication to spread their message, whatever. What would be the key factor in future is who would have greater willpower. So the battle would be the battle of willpower. And unfortunately the culture of materialism and liberalism very much weakens our willpower. Because we become too lazy, too dependent and very difficult for us to undertake big tasks. You look at people. They want to not commit. Nowadays, some people, they don't want to marry. Not because they don't have good, for example, you know, match. Sometimes they just don't want to commit. They are afraid of responsibility. Even if you ask someone, you know, what do you want me to prepare for lunch for you? He said, it's uh, still 10 o'clock. Uh, at 12 o'clock, I tell you. Even he doesn't want to accept to commit himself to lunch for two hours. <laughs> because he thinks that maybe in two hours my idea changes. So, willpower is very important. So, those who want to be with Imam Mahdi and helping him, they must be very strong in their willpower. And then, Amir al Mumin says, their hearts are united with loving each other and wishing the best for each other. I want for you the best. 
You want for me the best. This is the way we have to be. Like brothers, and when we say brothers and sisters, it means that our community, even if it is 200, 300 million people, or all Ummah, inshallah, we should be as close as brothers and sisters of the same parents. Unfortunately, the current is quite opposite. The current is that now even brothers of the same family, sometimes they don't have that unity. Sometimes, inshallah, God saves our community. But this is the current of this world. But we want to be so close to each other that even if we are 300 million, as soon as I see a Shia, I should feel very close. Then Amirul Mu'minin says, "Ka'annama Rabbahum abun wahid wa ummun wahid." You see a Shia from India, another from Pakistan, from uh, U.S., from India, from I don't know Argentina. They may look differently. They may have you know different skin color, different languages. But when it comes to their akhlaq to their understanding, to their performance, to their love for each other, as if they are brought up by the same father and mother. Suppose, you know, a father and mother, they have adopted a child from India, another child from, for example, Iran, another child from Lebanon, for example. And from very young age, these children are brought up together. You would see children of the same family. You would not see each of them has, you know, different culture or so this is another evidence. Also, we have in Tawqi out in the written message of Imam Mahdi Ajalallah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif that he says something very important. He says, Law anna ashya'ana wafaqahumullahu lita'atih. لو أن أشياعنا وفقهم الله لطاعته على اجتماع من الأمر. If our Shia may Allah give them توفيق to be obedient to Him على اجتماع من القلوب. There are different versions, slightly different. Some says اجتماع من الأمر والوفاء بالعهد. Some say اجتماع من القلوب في الوفاء بالعهد. Which means, if our Shia, may Allah give them tawfiq to obey him, if they were united in their affairs and loyal to the covenant that is upon them, لما تأخر عنهم اليوم بلقائنا. The blessing of meeting with us would not have been delayed. وَلَتَعَجَّلَتْ لَهُمُ السَّعَادَةُ بِمُشَاهَدَتِنَا And the happiness of witnessing us would have been brought earlier. So what is keeping us separate from our Imam? Our lack of ijtima'ah. Our hearts are not united, and therefore, because our hearts are united, are not united, our minds are not united, we think differently, we plan differently, our affairs are not united, our resources are not united, our leadership are not united, all different kinds of things, because hearts are not united. Mm. This is yeah. the problem. So I guess this is um, answering this question which I put on the screen just now. Um, there's another comment. Um, I'll get your view on this one as well. Yes. Sometimes, so this brother is saying that um, when we want to join with others, it's like independence because I rely on you, you rely on me. Maybe because we want to always be independent and ghani from everything, then we don't like to go into this wilayat and unity and dependence. Do you think this is a factor? Uh, it's a, it can be a kind of misconception. If we define independence as not being united. Like for example, a child has to become independent. 
but independent in what sense? In the sense that should try not to be a burden on the family, should try to be making his own living, etc. But not separate at the service of family, independent in this sense. Every Shia, every community should try to be independent in the sense that they can stand on their feet, they can look after their own needs, but then united with others. In this, like if, for example, if you have a football team, yes, every player has to be very good, very experienced, very strong, so that they can rely on him. But if he says, I am playing independently, in the sense that I play on my own, you play on your own, no. So, independence, but not alienation. Ah. This, is the, this is the thing. Independence and interdependence together. Because we have one team, yeah. not absolute independence, means you become a solid brick, but then we need to put these bricks together and make a construction, a palace. But if you, are, you know, suppose if you have, you know, one lorry of uh, bricks, what's the benefit? Just someone, you know, we put one. If we have one. For example, uh, thousand or one billion of divided people. What's the benefit? Yeah. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, with few devotees, managed to change the whole Arab Peninsula and the whole world. Yeah. Amir al muminin had much more, but how much Amir al muminin suffered? Imam Hassan had much more. But how much Imam suffered? Quantity is not that important. Yes, if quality is there, then quantity helps. Otherwise, sometimes quantity becomes actually a headache. How to you know, keep these people who everyone is thinking of his own together? Sometimes you see a smaller communities can manage better. If there is no unity, yes, if there is unity, the more the better. Is it too simple to say, like this brother is asking, that we have not identified our priorities correctly? Yes. Especially this unity, this social wilaya is top priority. And therefore, you know, many times I say to people, for example, you know, we have, you know, sometimes Ahlul Bayt societies in universities, you know, we have communities, you know, ex executive co you know, committee, etc. I say, Whenever you want to do something and you disagree, don't let this become a source of division or boycotting. Because I am sure 99% of what you do is not as important as your unity. No intelligent person would sacrifice something greater for something smaller. You want to do a project, okay, but your unity is more important than fighting over this project. And if there is unity and you sincerely ask Allah, Allah will give you ideas, solutions, resources, everything. Unity is very important. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Sheikh, for uh, starting us off on this important point. I know I've diverted your mind towards this, but because we finished on this last week, I wanted you sure. to touch upon that. No, it's very important. We can we can move on to our main subject of discussion now, which is of course the Ziyarat Ali Yasin. Okay, so I say Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, and then I start again, <laughs> so that uh, uh, this can be by itself a topic. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim.